Yes, welcome back again. So, in the unit three, we are discussing about what are the types of rubrics, how the rubrics nomenclature, and what are the applications and how the rubrics are being used. So, here we are going to learn some of the remaining concepts that we have list, left in the earlier sessions. So, here we are going to see about the nomenclature, how the rubrics are being determined depending upon its shape and dimensions. So why the, what is the importance of the nomenclature we are going to see here. See the types of riveted joints. So as the question comes like, then uh, how do you classify the riveted joints according to how these are being classified and depend upon according to a type of joints that we are using for what type of joints we are using this type of rivets plays a major role, right? So in the first condition, it is a lap joint. See here, uh, these things we are aware about when, uh, because the joint may not be that much in deviation because we may use it for the welding procedure also. So how much area of this particular uh, lap should be and uh, where this particular rivet should be placed this is the important thing we have to learn here. See, a lap joint is which where one plate overlaps or the other plates and the two plates are being joined by the process called riveting. We are using the rivet to join these two parts. Sim similarly, a butt joint, where the alignment of the button touching each other by using a covering plate, it is placed on the either side or both sides of the main plate. Next, the cover plate is riveted together by the main plates, right? Next, these butt joints are following have uh, two types, the single strap and a double strap. That means a single strap joint and a double strap. How I will show in the diagram if possible. See, according to riveting, in addition to the above type, a riveted joint depends upon the number of rows of the rivet, whether it may be single row or it may be a double row, it depends upon, right? So see, a single riveted joint and double riveted joints and a triple riveted joints which are used in the boiler shells. So depending upon, it may be a chain riveting process or it may be a zigzag riveting process. Depending upon, you see, we will see some of the exemptional cases. So if you can observe, these are the two blue color representations of the two different plates, which is overlapped over each other. And as these rivets are placed between a single row or single column, and uh, the distance between is indicated as uh, letter P. And from the neutral axis and the overlapped plate, it is represented as the term called M. Okay, the distance between. Similarly, in double type of riveting, you can see the two layers are being incorporated here, depending upon the size of the plate increasing. Two layers uh, for riveteds are being here. And this type of riveting is called as the chain type of riveting, right? In the third case, you can see the zigzag type of riveting. So see here, depending upon the size of the plate differs and uh, in the smaller section, you can see three rivets are being incorporated and uh, the larger section, you can see some more rivets are being incorporated. So here, this type of things are called as zigzag. So you have seen a single riveted joint, a chain riveted joint, and third case, you have seen a zigzag type of riveted joints. So chain riveting also, say here, this is the cross section and thickness of the plate is being indicated here, right? And uh, here in this chain riveting, we can see a multiple series of uh, rivets are being aligned with one after the another and the distance between the two rivets and also the distance between from the central neutral axis to the plate is being represented with the letter small n. In the second condition, if you observe the zigzag type of riveting, see here, if you can see with reference to one point, the area of the or uh, the location of the rivet is not in a uniform state. So it may be in uh, some distance and change in the orientation of the axis and the pattern is mainly of zigzag. And uh, here the distance may be differed from the previous condition, right? Next here, you can see the another condition called single riveted double strap 
means you see using double strap and butt joint we can see here okay single joint so see here we can also observe here the multiple plates are being there and uh, butt joint we are using in carpeting and also we have seen some sort of uh, double strap mechanism here here we can see here next here you can see the terminology of the rigid joint which, which represents the center diameter of center axis of the hole uh, between the two holes and from the center axis to the plate and distance between these two which represent and distance between this side of the rivet is being clearly given here. Next, what are the important terms that are used in the riveted joints? So see here, we can see some important things that are being covered. So pitch, it is a distance from the center of the rivet. So in the previous case, we have seen here now the, it is a distance from the center of the one rivet to the center of the next rivet, which is measured as the parallel to the joint, which is related by the letter P, next to back pitch, PP. It is a perpendicular distance between the center lines and also successive rows as shown in the figure, which is denoted by P suffix P. Next to diagonal pitch, it is represented by PD. This one is the diagonal axis, diagonal pitch, which clearly observed. It is represented by that. It is the distance between the center of the rivets in the adjacent rows of zigzag riveted joints, which are denoted by PD. Next, margin or marginal pitch. It is the distance between the center of the rivet hole to the nearest edge of the plate as shown in the figure. It is denoted by m is small m is equal to 1.5 into small d diameter of the hole. Okay. Next, nominal diameter. It is the standard diameter of the rivet. It is the diameter of the rivet in the hole before using the joint. Okay. Likewise, we have seen uh, different types of uh, riveted joints, double different types of joints. And also, you can, uh, if the question may appear, like explain the terms of the terminology of the riveted joints. And also, up till here, we have covered what are the types of rivets. In the next class, we are going to see about the problems which are based upon the riveted joints and how we are going to classify the riveted joints. Hope everyone have understood this particular topic. Thank you. Have a nice day.